Namaste. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining today. This is a Dharma Yoga All Levels class. However, if there will be modifications, there will be variations for those who are more advanced. If you like to try those, if you're familiar and uh, you're very familiar with the practice, then I um, then by all means go ahead. But be respectful of your limitations and modify as you need to. Please practice according to your condition and your abilities. So let's begin. So tall and straight, close the eyes, bring the attention inward. Nothing to do, nothing to seek. Everything we need is already within. three times to attract divine attention. Imagine you are everywhere.
May all beings everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice through our senses. May we always have a strong desire for the knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering. And may we cherish no ill feelings against each other. Only peace, love, joy, and compassion. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So let's do a bit of pranayama now. Do the main breathing to begin. So the main breathing, alternate nostril breathing can be done anytime during the day. It helps to calm the mind, to bring the energies into balance. And when the mind is calm, it becomes craving, It uh, you have less tendency to be affected by the cravings. Cravings lead to cravings lead to attachments. Attachments ultimately lead to suffering. So it has many benefits. Having the mind mind quiet and it also helps with your meditation practice. Meditation is simply uninterrupted concentration, making your mind one pointed. So for this technique, we'll do the rhythm three twelve six. It's a ratio one four two usually. You can, so as you get some more breath capacity, lung capacity, you can increase it to 4, 16, 8, and so on. But we'll do 3, 12, 6 today. We're breathing in through the active side for 3, holding a breath for 12 counts, and exhaling th uh, through the less active side for 6, back up through the less active for 3, hold for 12, out through 6, out for 6 through the active. So you're starting beginning on, starting and ending on the active side. For the breath retention, we're applying the throat in a root lock. For the root lock, you contract the root muscles, pull them up towards the navel. Push the belly button, the, the, you can imagine trying to push the belly button through uh, towards the lower, um, the front of the spine. For the throat lock, as you inhale, you want to lift the chest as much as possible so the chest comes up high. So when you hold the breath, you bring the chin down without hunching the back. The back stays nice and straight. You also bring the, roof, um, the tongue to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth to help to seal off the lock and the attention is at the space between the eyebrows. Hands, left hand in Yana Mudra, second finger and thumb connected, other three fingers straight on the left knee. Right hand, Vishnu Mudra, second and third fingers fold down towards the palm. When you turn the palm towards you, it's no longer Vishnu Mudra. It's the mudra used for pranayama, thumb for the right nostril, right ring finger for the left nostril, always a right hand. So I'll guide you through it. First, find the active nostril. Close off the right side by pressing the thumb against the right nostril. Inhales, sorry, what did I say? Anyways, close off the right side. Press the thumb against the right uh, nostril. Inhale a few times to the left side. And then repeat on the other side. So the right ring finger for the left side. Breathe in and out to the right. Whichever side feels more open is your active side. The field exactly the same, default to the left side for your active. So my side was the left side is my active side, so I'll I'll demonstrate on that side. Sitting up tall and straight now. Exhale completely, empty the lungs. At the end of that exhale, close off the less active side, inhale through the active. Three, close the both nostrils hold the breath. Two, three, four. Remember the throat and the root lock. Six, seven, eight. Attention to the space in the eyebrows. Ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale through the less active side. Evenly and steadily. Empty out by the completely by the lick. Sixth count. Five, five, six. Inhale through the le less active side. Three. Hold the breath for twelve. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale through the active side. Two, three, four, five, six. That was one cycle. Inhale through the left. Three, hold the breath for twelve. All the attention at this space in the eyebrows to attract all the prana there, all of it of force. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale through the less active side. Two, three, four, five, six. Inhale through the less active side. Three, hold the breath. Two, three, remember chin on the chest, throat lock and root lock. 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Exhale out through the active side. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Inhale through the active. Hold for 12. Exhale through the less active side. Get the deal completely as you exhale. Five, six. Inhale through the less active side. Three, hold the breath, chin on the chest. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Exhale out through the active side. Three, four, five, six. Do a few more cycles on your own, just get the sense of it. Three, twelve, six. remember, keep the count even and steady if you want to slow it down. According to your breath capacity, you may. Always move according to your own condition. Everything stops when you hold the breath. The mind goes quiet. The body is still. Even the emotions are like as though they're frozen. as a gateway to the higher realms of yoga. It's a very important aspect, very important uh, practice in itself. Eventually, through age, through um, the body getting tired or injured, body may not be able to do asa anymore, asana anymore, so it's important to have a pranayama practice. Countless benefits. Do at least 12 cycles when you're doing it on your own at home. Eventually, you can add a cycle after a couple weeks and then increase from there as you see fit and as time permits. Next time you begin again, this is your last one. Do not shortchange it. Do it as it should be done. Keep the count even. Don't rush. Once you're done, just sit tall, close the eyes. Take note of the state of the body, the mind, and emotions. Have no judgment as to what you observe. Just be like the witness watching everything. Momentarily, we'll begin the physical practice. Through the forms we experience, the, the practice is done, the physical practices help us to recognize the fact that we have to pass through everything in order to gain the knowledge. Knowledge is the anecdote to removing suffering. So through the asanas, we put this into practice. 
not all experiences, not all, just like as you might experience, not all postures are easy. Some are challenging. Some are not even pleasant. Sometimes you might sense, but they all serve a purpose. Love them all. And through this practice, you start to love the forms as well, those which are associated with the, uh, with the postures that we practice. And this helps to cultivate compassion. So now, this practice putting compassion into action through the practice. Offer up the practice to all beings. Love all experiences. Love all forms. So let's begin. Sit. So begin with the feet about 10 inches apart. Raise your arms above the head. Imagine you're charging your body up with your energy from the soles of the feet. Inhale, pull the earth's energy right up to the fingertips. Two, three, four. Feel it flooding your body. Six, seven, eight. Hold the attention and the breath at the fingertips. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale all the way back down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale again. Pull that earth's energy right up through the body. Use your attention to attract all the energy there. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold the at the fingertips. Hold the breath again. Three, four, five, six. Exhale all the way back down. Feel as though that charge were reaching every part of the body. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Last time. Inhale, bring your energy right up to the fingertips. You have to imagine it surging all the way up through the body. Then holding at the fingertips, hold the breath. Exhale all the way back down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Feel fully charged, ready to practice. Now bring the arms down, continue some warm ups to prepare the body. Start to swing from one side to the other. Have to move the joints every day. Loosen them up, keep the bottom of the state of radiant health. The stronger you are, the healthier you are, the more able you are to spread the practice, to share the practice. Good. And now, bring your arms, um, release your arms, place them onto your hips, circle the head. Large circles. Try to get the ears to the shoulders, back of the head to the top of the back, the chin on the chest. And then switch the direction of rotation. Again, modify if you need to. If you can only do half circles, it's okay. It's always practice mindfully and consciously. Try to see the head all the try to see the floor all the way around as you take your head around. And then release. Now forearms swing the arm right arm forward. Loosen up the shoulder. And then switch directions, go back. And forward again. Feels like you're holding a weight of five pounds in your arm and the other side, other weight. And then the other arm, arm, arm. And then go the other way. Make as though you've got to throw a ball. Forward again. And back. Good. And now from here, arms out in front. And then spin the arms in opposite directions. One arm's going forward and down. The other one's going back. And then come back to center, switch directions. And then release. Elbows up, um, arms up, take hold of your elbows, <laughs> take hold of your elbows, bend to your left. Come up, go to the right, stretch to the left side of the body. Come up, go to the left again, make sure you don't make wrinkles in the underside of the body if you can avoid it. Come up, go to the other side. And then coming back, back, push hips forward, head back, and then forward, 
tension into the chest, up and back again, and forward. And coming up. Good. And then from here, release. Next one. Lion's breath. I'm going to make like we're pouncing like a lion. The eyes go wide and the tongue hangs out of the mouth. And when you squat, you can just squat to the level that you can. You don't have to go down all the way. Just be mindful again of your knees. Big exhale as you come down. fingers very very rapidly make as though you have no control over your hands whatsoever they're moving all by themselves and fling the hands up and down like the wings of a hummingbird again moving so fast they're like a blur you can't even see them move and then from here arms up to the side swing the right leg back and forth if you like you can hold on to chair or a wall try to get your knee to the shoulder Make like the legs a pendulum. And then the other leg. Um, take the hands by sides, the head down in humility pose. On the inhale, we're going to sweep the arms up and come up off your heels. Exhale, coming back down. So graceful movements. Inhale, rise up. Three, four, exhale down. Two, three, four. Push in the roots of your toes. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three. Four. Inhale. Two. Three. Four. Ex whoops. Exhale. Two. Three. Four. Inhale. Two. Three. Four. Exhale. Two. Three. Four. Last time. Inhale. Two. Three. Four. Stay up. Reach up higher. See if you can touch the fingertips of the ceiling. And exhale. Two, three, four. Head back down in the gesture of lowliness. Offer up the practice. Make as though you're the servant to all beings everywhere through the offering of this practice. Renounce all the fruits. So now let's come to the front of the mat. Hands to the heart center. Surya Namaskara. So imagine the light and the warmth shining down on you. It's like the wisdom, it represents the wisdom and the love of God. Infuse yourself with it and send it out to all beings everywhere. Raise your arms up, hold the head, reach up and back, stretch. Fold forward. Hands to the ground, bend your knees if you need to bring your hands to the ground. Right foot back, lower down your knees, sink down to the seat. Push the seat in. Come into high plank. Bring the knees down, the seat all the way back behind the heels. Glide forward, tug at the floor with your arms, propel yourself forward. Shoulders back, head back. Come all the way back, the seat behind the heels. Come forward again. Make so you try to drag the floor towards you. This propels you forward with more power and ease. All the way back, one more time. Brush the nose to the ground, glide forward. Pressing the tops of the feet, take the head back. Roll over your toes, downward facing dog. Lift the seat up and back, the head comes down below the arms. Look to the hands, right foot forward. If that's, if you can't make it all the way, you can lower the back knee down if you need to. Use your right hand to assist the foot forward. Drop your seat down again. And then the feet come together, Uttanasana, chest again on the thighs, head down. Come all the way up. Arms over the head, stretch the front of the body. Come back home, hands to the heart. Raise your arms up. Don't worry about the breath. Just move the body the way that feels natural for the body to move so that the breath stays uniform and steady. Left leg back this time. 
knee down, sit all the way down again, also into high plank, the knees down, the seat all the way back, glide between the arms again, coming forward, open up the chest, all the way back, brush the nose the ground as you come forward, slide forward, the whole front of the body becomes nice and long, all the way back and open, glide forward, make like a snake creep into the grass, Remember, try to imitate the forms at all levels. Roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog. Lift the seat, melt the heart in every sense. Left foot steps forward, back knee down, sit down to the seat. Feet come together, pull the body to your legs, head down. Rise up, hinge back, hands back to the heart. Raise your arms up, go back. Come forward and down into Uttanasana. Right foot back, lower down the knee, sink down to the seat. Into the plank, down we go, Ashtanga Namaskar. Knees, chest, forehead down. Right, right into Cobra this time, just once. Roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward, drop down to the seat, look up, it's all an offering. Feet together, a zone humbleness this time. Come right up every moment, reflecting the intention. Hands back to the heart. Every movement, expression of divine love and devotion and surrender to the highest self that we find within in spiritual heart. Uttanasana, left foot back, lower down the knee, sink down to the seat, into the plank. Down we go, Ashtanga Namaskar, knees, chest, forehead down. Follow through the cobra, shoulders back. Make sure you don't jam up the back of the neck. Keep your shoulders down. Keep the lower back long. Back into the Adho Mukha Savanasana. Good. A foot forward, sink down to the seat. Feet come together, Uttanasana. Pull the body to your legs. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms, go back. Come forward into Uttanasana. This time go deeper, press the belly onto your thighs, bend in your knees, join the hands behind the back, telescope your chest forward, exhale, plunge the head down towards the feet, use wide, push against the legs. Try to get your hands over your shoulders, so you might be able to go further, try to get your hands in front of your head. Legs will be the spine. Good. Now bring the hands down, right foot back, lower down the knees, sit down to the seat. Raise your arms up, Kapiyasana, pull the arms back. Reach back as far as you can, stretch the limits. And then come back down, plant your hands, step back into plank. Lower down knees, chest and forehead. Glide right through into the cobra. Adho Mukha Savanasana, roll over your toes. Right leg back, Eka Pada, Adho Mukha Savanasana, right leg up I should say. And then step the foot between your hands. Back knee down, sit down to the seat, Kapyasana again. Reach the arms up, join hands together, Kali Mudra, index fingers press together, reach back. And then break the pose. Bring the hands back down, step your left foot in to meet the right, chest on the thighs. Again, plunge your head down, gesture of lowliness. Good, try to get your legs straight. If you can't get your legs straight without detaching your body from the legs, keep your knees bent. And then release. Come all the way up to stand, reach up and back, hips forward. Engage your buttocks in your upper back to help you in the back bend. As you lean back, come back to the heart. Raise your arms up, go back. Four, just keep watching the body moving gracefully. Be the witness. Bend your knees, chest on your thighs, join the hands, and down, as they are. down we go again. Push the body into your legs, try to get your knees lower than your, your chest lower than the knees. And then release, left foot back, lower down the knees, sink down to the seat, pull the arms up over the head, reach back, bury your mind deep in the heart, watch the body move with more grace and ease and steadiness. And then come back down, plant your hands, step back into the plank, Ashtanga Namaskar, knees, chest, forehead down. Glide right into the cobra. Adho Mukha Savanasana, let the seat up and back. Left leg goes up. Ekapada Adho Mukha Savanasana. And step the foot. Try to land it very softly between your hands. Bring your shoulders over your fingertips. This will 
Allow the foot to come down with more control. Drop your seat down, the knee rests on the ground, arms over the head, arch back, crescent moon. Stretch the body out of the hips. And then come forward again with the hands, side of your left foot, right foot comes in to meet it. Chest on the sides and then plunge the head down. Try to get your head to rest right on your feet eventually. If you're very flexible, the whole front of the body is glued against the legs. And then release. Bring your arms up and back, over the head, arch back as you see fit. Hands back to the heart. Another variation, reach the arms up. Remember, be open to all experiences, all perspectives. They all have something valuable to learn, uh, to teach us. Lift head and chest, you either hop or walk back. Push into your hands if you're jumping back. Bend your elbows so you land softly, not like a big heavy thud. Now from here, into upward facing dog. If you're liking, you can turn over, uh, push into reach your toes. Walk a little bit further so your hips come to your hands. And now, pulse back and forth. Make like you're trying to fold the body in half at the tops of the legs. That's where your hinge is. Make like a dog howling at the moon. Now tuck your chin in, press into your roots, your toes, back into downward facing dog here. We're pulsing again. This time the belly comes towards the thighs. The chest comes to the ground. If you can, you can tap the top of the head to the ground. More flexible, try to get your forehead, nose, maybe even the chin on the ground. Push the floor away from you. Try not to bend the arms. Be like a dog stretching its back. And be like the loyal dog. Demonstrate its loyalty. Now lift the heels, bend the knees to the hands, hold the breath. Bring your feet forward softly, hopping or walking. Pull the body down onto your legs. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Go up and back again. Stretch the whole front of the body. Imagine you're made of elastic. Pull the body down. Eventually make the body, you become what you believe. From here, lift the head, chest, press into your hands, hold your breath, and go back, hopping or walking, into high, um, um, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Now from here, transition right into down facing dog, round your back, and then soften the line in the back, and melt your heart, come forward again, rounding your back in between as you make your transition. Push your chest, your chest forward, back the other way now, tuck your chin in, imagine trying to push the heart right between your shoulder blades, and then down towards the ground. Come forward again, rounding your back, then flexing your spine, arching your back. Back the other way, rounding your back. And downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out, remove all fatigue, all struggles. Now lift the heels, bend the knees, lift your hands. Hop or walk your feet forward. Pull the body down onto your legs. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Good. Raise your arms up. Go back, uh, down. Now from here, lift the head. Walk your feet down a little bit. Drop down. Come into a squat here. Press your, th um, your wrists together about the same height as the elbows. Keep your shoulders and your inner, keep your shoulders and your knees together. Plant your hands down and just hold your breath. Tip four, come up off the roots of your heels. Keep your head up, flex your feet so you can come into crow pose, kakasana. Keep your arms bent. But if you can't, you can just stay on your toes. But just squeeze the shoulders of the elbows, not <laughs> the knees in towards the shoulders. And then this might eventually just keep pressing the legs as much as possible against the inner, um, the inner legs against the arms. Flex your feet, and this helps you to keep your balance in the pose. Now from here, if you want, you can exit right to Chaturanga. Hold your breath, jump back, or just walk back. Put your feet down and come into Chaturanga. Into Upward Facing Dog. Back into Downward Facing Dog. Lift the heels, bend the knees, 
jump or a walk forward, pull the body down onto your legs. Come right up to standing, we jump back. Hands back to the heart. One more time. Raise your arms up both the head, stretch the whole front of the body. Create space, approach a true nature which is limitless. Balance it in its potential. Pull head, bring the hands down. You can do kakasana again, or again practice just lowering your seats and just lift back up onto your heels, off your heels, and then come back down. Do this kind of thing. Keep squeezing your arms against your sh your legs and vice versa. If you can, bakasana. Arms stay straighter. Your knees come right into your armpits. Lean forward. Hold your breath and bring your feet up. Try to get your shoulders over your fingertips. Again, according to your comfort level. From here, hold your breath. You can either hop or walk back into Chaturanga. Through into Upward Facing Dog. Back into Downward Facing Dog. Lift the heels, bend the knees up to the hands. Bring your feet forward, hopping and walking. Pull the body down onto your legs. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. And bring the hands back to the heart. Take pause here for a moment. From the heart, inhale up to the crown. Send all your love up there. Exhale back down to the heart. Remain established in the hearts of all beings. And release. So we'll continue now some postures. Now the body's a little bit warmer. So now, starting off with some balanced poses. Stand with your left on your left foot first. Bring the right heel up, knee up, and take hold of the heel from the inside. If you can, extend your leg and the arm at the same time. Open up the pose here. If you're having trouble bouncing, you can stand against the wall, your back against the wall. If you're having a lot of trouble straightening your leg, you can hold underneath the knee if you need to. Just do what you can, do your best. Have no judgment, no concerns to what you can or cannot do. If you're more flexible, bring your leg up high or close to your head and lean a little bit to your left so your fingers and toes stay in the same height. Now from here, engage your leg. See if you can let go of the foot. Try not to drop the foot. And then bring your leg down. Don't let it drop all the way down right into airplane, arms out straight, palms down. Cant the body forward like you're doing a nose dive here. Keep the legs straight, the leg higher than the head, the foot higher than the head. Reach, good. Now press into the left foot, hold the breath and come back up. Try it on the other side now. Standing firm and strong on that right foot. If you need to, you can take your focus on the ground about three feet in front, sometimes helps. Something that doesn't move, always better for balance so you don't get distracted. Again, into dancer pose. Embody all the characteristics and qualities of a dancer. Be poised, be graceful, be magnificent. Again, bring your foot up higher if you can, closer to the head if you're more flexible. Do your modifications as you need to. Now from here, engage the leg, hold the breath, so you can take, release your hand now without dropping a foot. And then, slowly lower your leg down, you have to keep your leg engaged. Bend your right leg a little bit, uh, press into that right foot, like an airplane, arms out straight, but the same height, Leg high in the head. If you lose your balance, just bring your index fingers down to the ground. But try to get your leg up higher without bending the knee. And then from here, press into the right foot and come back up. Okay, now come to the back end of the mat. So we're starting off with hummingbird. And then if you can, you can move into um, toppling tree. So I'll show you for a little bit. 
Bend your knees, bring your belly onto your thighs, arms up. To this, um, arms up. Of course, if you're having trouble balancing, you take your index fingers to the ground, slide your right foot back, and bring the right leg up. The knee is very bent, close to um, the heel is close to your seat. Rest your belly on your thigh. And if you can, bring your arms up over your shoulders, your hands over your shoulders. Gaze intently at the ground in front of you. Make yourself very small, delicate like the little hummingbird. Now you can either stay here or extend your leg and then interlace your fingers, keep your palms open, arch to back, try to get your chest forward a little bit, your head up, but still the right leg higher than the head. Good, and from here, press into your left foot and come back up. Try it on the other foot now. Bend your knees, land your belly on your thigh, always if you can. You can always, if you need to, you start with your fingertips on the ground, the index fingers, slide your left foot back, and pull the knee right up towards the sky, the foot close to the seat. Rest your belly on your thigh, when you find a balance, you can take your arms up. Keep your head close to the height of the knee. And if you want to go further, extend the left leg now. Interlace your fingers, open up the palms, pull the hands higher over your shoulders. Bring your head forward a little bit, arch the back, lift the left leg up higher if you can. And from here, press into the right foot and come back up. Good, now stand in the middle of the mat, facing that long edge of the mat. Bring your index fingers, other fingers in line with the elbows. Jump your feet apart. Go to your left, so if you're facing away from the screen, you can't see it anymore, you can just turn around 180 degrees. Now get nice and low, shoulders about the height of the, uh, thing, hands of the height of the shoulders. Hips very low, the knee comes over the toes. If you swing your right hand down, the fingers might eventually touch the ground. Be strong and fierce here. Now from here, press into your left foot, come all the way up. Join your hands behind the back, interlace the fingers, lift the head, bring it all, the head all the way back, chest up. Now from here, starting off with pyramid pose. So bow down now, the chest, the belly resting on your left thigh, the hands coming over the head. Make sure the back heel is down. If you need to, you can move the right foot in, uh, out to the right a little bit, square off your hip, left hip moves back. Right hip moves forward. Now from here, bend your left knee and then slide the right foot out a little bit. Humble warrior, if you can, slide your shoulder down the inside of the knee, try to get your head on the ground. If you need to, you can bring your right knee down to the ground. You can even have your hand on the ground and your hands on the seat. Try to get your head right down to the ground. Sink your seat a little bit. If you slide your right foot back, you might be able to get your, and hips are about the height of the knee, you'll be able to get your head down a little bit more easily. Good, now break the pose. If you're stronger, lift your head and chest about midway, and then from here, bring your hands down. Move your left foot out to the left a little bit more. Turn forward, right knee down, slide your right toes back. Now fall to the right, try to get your right form and the right hip to come down. Roll to your left, try to get your left form down. And keep telescoping your chest forward. Think of the Sphinx pose, your hips, from everywhere from the hips all the way down to the feet, grounded, heavy. And then maybe you can just, the rest of the body will follow with the pelvis, followed by the, the belly, followed by the chest. If you're very close to the ground, you can take your left hand to the outside of the foot, 
Make sure the knee stays close to the shoulder. If you can't get your hip down very far, it looks more like this. Just stay on your hands, but just keep on imagining you have hips, weight in your hip pockets. And then maybe eventually the body will come down lower. Be like a lizard sunning itself on a warm earth. back onto the hands. Keep your seat low. Left hand comes to your left knee. Right hand moves back if you can towards the foot. Lean away from the leg. If it doesn't too much, keep your hand on the back of the knee. Again, on the thigh. Now those of you who want to go into swan, you can. You can bring the right foot up. Bring it close to the shoulder. Lean towards the foot. And then from here, you can take it with your left hand and bring your foot to the crook of the arm, the fingers close to the ear. Now to take the bind, you can join your hands, lock the fingers together, tuck your chin in, and then lift your wrists, the inside of the wrists, and maybe your head will come on top or to the other side of the head. And then try to push the foot away from your shoulder now. Think of a someone's neck, there's no big sharp bends in it. Graceful lines here. If you're not in a full pose, can't take the bind, you can just reach the left arm overhead and just do what you can. And from here, break the pose. Bring the right foot down and then turn forward. Bring the left foot in a little bit more, bend the toes under and back foot. Your legs should be like a box now. I'm going to do it this way so you can see from this side first. It may be easier if you have uh, um, see, right arm up, left hand just anchors the leg in place, angle and tone the knee towards the right, and then dive down until you can get your arm to sit on the leg, the armpit on the outside of the knee. Left hand pushes in the right, and you don't want to stay down here, you want to push the left hand into the right so the belly comes higher than the thigh, and the center of the chest comes to your thumbs, and then roll the left shoulder all the way back by continuing to push against the, the right shoulder against the outside of the knee. If you want to take a bind, I'm going to change direction again so you can see, create more space, more distance between your seat and the front heel by bringing your seat back, and then use your left hand to snake your hand underneath so you, you're, you don't have to bend your arm too much if your hips are back. And then you may, you'll scoot your hand underneath, left arm goes over your back and you pull the hand out a little bit further towards your belly. And then you might be able to take your left wrist or lock your fingers together. Roll the left shoulder back. This is, again is an option. You can stay with your hands in prayer. If you can, hold the breath. Push the knee away from the ground. Keep the back knee lifted and keep spinning towards the ceiling until your face and chest are turned right up. Now to break the pose, release the bind if you have it. Right hand just in front of the shoulder a little bit. Spin towards the left, Fasi Stasana. You can stay with your legs crossed, a little bit more easy. If you want, you can stack your feet on top of another. Arms in the same line if you can. If it's too much, just lower down the knee. Push your hips forward. Look up, every pose again, an expression of divine love, of devotion. Go to the other side now. Come back into plank. Move your left hand, displace it so it's more from the nose. Goes to the right a little bit and come again into side plank. Whatever variation or modification you need to do. Body straight, arms straight up and down. Come back to high plank. And then from here, bring me. Here, here. Yes. So raise the left leg up, and from here, see if you can break your head down to the ground. It's just a stretch here if you want. You can jump, you can walk come forward, take the hold of the other, um, the front of the mat. See if you can get your head down. Try to get your back to curve. 
you can, you can slide your right hand back somewhere between your foot and your, move your foot in if you need to. So you might be able to take hold of the inside of the heel with your right hand. If you can't quite reach, you can either keep your hand wherever you find steadiness, either just somewhere between a foot and a hand, or a foot and a, the head and a foot, or somewhere along the body or along the leg. And then release. Right hand comes back. Bring your head up and bring your left foot forward between your hands. Spin towards the long edge of the mat and come up again. Go to the right, bending into the right knee. Again, turn around if you need to, if you're facing the wrong way. Exude all the qualities of warrior, courage, determination, leadership, most of all devotion. From here, press into the front foot, turn towards the front of the mat, Join your hands behind the back. Place your left foot a little bit more to the left a little bit. Pull the hands down. Lift the chest. Bring your head back. Open yourself up to divine grace. Keep the back leg strong. Left heel down. Then from here, bring your head back. Hinge at the hips. Come forward. Bow down. Rest your belly on your thigh. If you need to bend your right knee a little bit, you can. Eventually, you just try to push your knee, your leg, straight, unbend the knee. Your cheek on the right side, left side of the leg, shin, your right shoulder beside your knee, perhaps. Now you can stay here or bend your right knee, and then slip off your leg towards the right, so you can go towards the left, humble warrior. The knee slides the inside, the shoulder slides the inside of the knee, your arms go over the head. The head comes down. If you can't get your head down, you can try to lower your left knee down to see if you can get your head closer to the ground. You can even use your hands if you need to. Okay, so just be creative to just try to find your way into the poses with practice. You learn many tricks for yourself. Open yourself up to the guidance of the guru who's within. And you connect psychically with them so that they will share the knowledge with you willingly. And now from here, if you're strong, press into your feet, come up halfway, and then release the hands. From here, lower the back knee down, flatten out the toes, facing forward, and then drop over to your left. Try to get your left hip and left form to come down. Roll to the right, try to get your right hip to come down the seat. Should be, um, the, the seat should be coming towards the ground. And telescope your chest forward, see if you can get your chest on the ground. So make sure your knees not fall away from your shoulder like this and not like this either. So you want to have the hips more or less even, if you need, close to the shoulder. If you need to stay on your hands, that's okay. Eventually, you keep coming down. With your hips anchored down, maybe the rest of the body follows. And then at some point, maybe the body will come down lower than the knee. Be like a lizard just sunning itself on the warm earth. Imitate the forms. Try to see or imagine where they are at ease and put yourself in that place. Soon you'll find the ease as well. Now come back onto your hands. Move the right foot in. The legs are like a box. The heel underneath the back of the knee. Bend the toes under on the left foot. Left arm goes up. And then go to your right. Notice again how the back of the arm is sitting on the outside of the knee. Right hand pushes into your left. And then push the right hand down into your left so the belly comes higher than the thigh. Roll the right shoulder all the way back. Face and chest turned up. Again, if you want to take the bind, you can go ahead, snake your left arm underneath your leg, and then push into the roots of your toes of your left foot, take your knee up off the ground. If this is too much, you can just stay upright, left hand on the outside of the knee, right hand on the seat. Good. Practice. 
practice is an ideal blend of strength, drive, and effort, but also surrender and softness. Offer it all up. Okay, so again, pulling the hand through a little bit more. If you take the bind, take, lock the fingers together, or you can eventually hold the right hand with your left, right wrist with your left hand. Pull the right shoulder back. Keep your knee down if you need to. Push back through the back heel. Break the pose. Bring your hands back down. And now from here, lower the knee down and bring the other knee beside it. From here, sit back on your heels and then see if you can come back. So if you're more flex, if you're if you're less flexible, you can just stay up a little bit more, walk your hands further back, and then just try to create as much distance in your shoulders and your knees. More flexible, come down. Maybe you can even sit between your heels, those of you who can. And then come down onto forearms. Maybe even if you can, put your back on the ground. Take hold of your opposite elbows over the head. Bring your thighs together once you're down. Inhale, inflate the lungs, puff up the chest. Exhale, slowly deflate. Feel the belly button going right, sinking right down through the body. Feel the lower back heavy, sinking to the ground as well. Now from here, press your Hands and feet if you're all the way down, tuck the chin in, press into your elbows, and from here, come back up. Push one hand, place it where the elbow was, and then come back up. Now another round of Vasi Stasana, I'll show a few options. We're going a little bit into variations if you like. So I'm plank. I like to come into downward facing dog first so your hips are high, and then your stance is a little bit shorter. Walk the left hand towards the right, spin towards the right. Try to have your left foot at 45 degrees, the base of the big toe down, and slide the right toes back. Now really push into with your toes, and as you're spinning up towards the ceiling, you want to really push the base of the big toe down on your left foot, the, the foot that's going to support you in the end. Your hip is really high, like in Urdhva Dhanilasana. Make sure you don't fall into your shoulder. Make sure you don't drop into your shoulder like that. Keep your arm fully extended. And then we have a strong connection with the ground with your hands and foot of your left side. You can take your right foot up, it becomes weightless or less weight, or like almost weightless. And bring your knee up, perhaps catch the knee. If you're more flexible, take hold of the foot. Keep your hip high. If you don't, if you drop down to the hip, then you bend your knee you lose the strength faster. So go ahead. If you want, otherwise just go into your regular vasisthasana. Or you can stay here. And then I'll repeat, or return from the pose, come back into plank position. Again, you can do the modified uh, any of the vasisthasanas you know already, side plank, or try this one, bring your seat back. Right hand comes more to your left. Start to spin towards your left. And then from here, slide your left toes back. Pace, press the base big toe down. The right foot's at 45 degrees. Your hip is really high, so you're trying to get your, knee, your hip over your knee. And then from here, you can take your left knee up, left foot up off the ground more easily. Keep your hip very high. Eventually be able to take the foot. If you have the flexibility, push into your right foot, really press through the inner edge of the foot, the base of the big toe, especially the inside of the heel. Break the pose. Come back the same way. Bring the left toes down, spin towards the front. Well, from here, lower the right knee down underneath your belly. The toes go out to your left. Bring your left knee inside, uh, just in behind it. Your toes go to the right, and then you're sitting back between your heels. Tug on the feet. Try to get your knees to line up one on top of the other. 
Now bring the right arm up, spin the arm inward, pull the elbow up higher and then bend the arm so the hand, come to, hand comes between the shoulder blades. Push your elbow further back, behind the head and further up. Fingers might gain a little bit more uh, ground, it might go a little bit further down. If you want, you can stay there, or if you have the mobility, take your left arm down, roll the head of the shoulder forward, and snake it up the back. See so if you can lock your fingers together and push in the back of the heart. Sit upright. Inhale, raise the chest, lift the gaze. Exhale, sink down to the seat, stay heavy to the seat. Shoulders drop. Lose yourself in the sensations. All beings are experiencing this through your body. So make this the best experience as possible. No pain, no anxiety, no distress. No abruptness. From here, take your chin, bring the right arm down. Place your hands down, lift your seat. You are pressing on the other edges of the feet now. Now we're going to spin towards the left. Circle around, stay on the same spot with your feet. Just walk your hands around all the way around, form a full circle until you're facing forward again. And then lower your seat down. This time your left knee will be on top, hopefully. Okay, so then again, sit between your heels. Always remember you can take anything you need to to make it more accessible to you, a cushion or whatever. Have both sides of the seat down. Left arm up. Pull the arm up higher and push it further behind the head. Take your hand down the back between your shoulder blades. Keep your arm anchored in place with your back of the head. And if you can, you can take the right arm up the back. Join your hands. Try to get your elbows to line up right on top of one another there. Your head midway between. Keep the eyes soft. If your eyes start popping out of the head, it might be an indication you need to back off a little bit. Stay upright. Here, tuck the chin in, bring the left elbow down, and release, shake it out. All right, inversions, the king of the postures now. Shiro Shasana. Give a few options here. So, you can start with your head on the ground. If you don't have too much issue with your neck or you don't, uh, you don't feel pressure too badly on your head, this is uh, one, probably the one easier ways of getting in. Make sure your hands are not beside your head. They should be back around where the line of the knees is. The fingers spread, the palms facing towards you, fingers away. Equal distance spread apart. Then bring one leg up. Bend your knee on the leg that's up so that the foot comes close to your seat, hanging down heavily, like a fruit hanging off the tree. And you can just pulse up and down, try to get your heel up. Come onto your roots, your toe, uh, the big, the toe pads, the front of the head, a little, you're more in front of the head, so near the hairline. Push into your fingertips and bend your toes back so the foot, toes come away from the ground. Bit by bit, keep pushing into your fingertips. You might be able to cut pushing through the back leg, back foot, so eventually your hips and your feet, heels are on the same line. Don't jump, don't go too fast. Always with control. Okay, if it's too much, if you have, uh, don't have a lot of hip flexibility, you can't get your leg very high, you can try this one. Just walk forward until your seat is over the shoulders, more or less, as close as possible, and just push against the knees with your elbows, just below the knees. And from here, flick your toes away from the ground again. So if you can get your seat over your hips, you're more than halfway there. Then you can bring your feet up and move your, elbow, your, your um, knees and close to your shoulders. If it's too much doing your fingertips, you can do it on your hands. 
and hands flat, your fingers facing towards the head. So do again, according to your condition. Advanced practitioners, if you did that pose with one of the legs split, so you can come up off all but just the index finger. Or you can try other things. Try to lift the one hand up. So usually the foot that's behind you is the same side that you lift your hand. So just play back and forth, push through the base of the toes. You have to push through the foot that's behind you. Just try a few times, just try to get your head off, head off the ground. Maybe 30 more seconds, keep playing around. If this is too much for you, forehead on the ground in front of the knees and just lift your seat up so you can get your seat over your knees. And if you feel okay, you can come more in the back of the head by bringing your seat up right over your knees if you can. If it's too much, rock your head forward a little bit. And coming back down, rest in child's pose. Breathe in, breathe out. Roll your way up. Okay, so now, another version. Your arms are gonna be like this. Your elbows closer in than the shoulders. Okay, so they're a little bit less than shoulder width apart. Fingers are spread right beside your head. So just your wrist, base wrist just against either side of the head like this. Okay, so you can keep your head down, or if you're more advanced and you feel comfortable, press into forms and you lift, you do it with your head lifted off the ground for balance. So you can always do this against the wall as well. So imagine there's a wall in behind me, like I'm facing the wall. So from here, start with your head on the ground if you like. I'll do this version first, walk your feet towards you. So then you place your feet, uh, left one foot behind you if you can, behind your back, have the foot hanging down. And from here, push into your forearms, push in the base of wrists. Try and get your other foot up, try not to jump again too much. Walk your foot closer to your elbow first so you don't have to jump as much. You just lift your toes up and your hips are up over your shoulders. You're in the right alignment already, almost. Just keep pushing back to the back foot. Move mindfully and slowly. Don't jump hard and fast to land on your back. Okay, for those of you who want, you can push into your forearms and see so you can get your head up off the ground. Hold the breath. Push down into your wrists, your forearms, and see if you can lift your head up off the ground. If you know how to do this, go ahead. You can even start with your head lifted if you want. It doesn't have to start on the ground. If it's too much, you can just keep your head on the ground and just don't even have to lift the foot up off the ground. Just lift the pulse up and down, up off your heel. If you want to come up higher, you have to move again. Your foot closer to your elbows a little bit and peel your toes away from the ground. Don't jump. Again, don't jump hard and fast. This is what makes you land on your back. If you go too hard, do it with control. And then coming back slowly, if you're in a pose, back down, child's pose. Breathe in, breathe out all fatigue. Now roll up, and you can make your way into shoulder stand from here. So take your legs out front, scooch the front of the mat, in the, uh, more the, one of the more easy ways to go into it is to just tuck your chin in, roll back, push into your arms as your back comes down and your feet come behind your head. And see if you can get join your hands your behind, um, behind your back so that your elbows are coming close together. And then you can bring your hands on your back, your wrists are about the, um, on the upper part of the back and the middle part of the back and see if you can raise one leg at a time. 
reach right up as though you're trying to touch the toes, the ceiling, and then keep pressing to your back. Bring the other leg up. If this is too much, you can do bridge pose. Or if your arms are just not, you know, you, you don't have to bring your, if your elbows you can't get them behind your back, you can just stay lower if you need to. Just again, modify according to your condition. Come to a place where you find steadiness. If it's too much, you can either sit on your hands with your legs up, you can be right against the wall if you like, or bridge pose. Bring your heels just close to your seat, lift your hips, Tuck your shoulders underneath, so shoulder blades come together, and try to push your chest right forward so it looks like a wall right against the chin. Hands are still underneath your body. Try to work again your knees. Back to your knees and line with your heels. Leave the body alone. Once you find the pose, those of you who want to go to lotus, you can go to lotus. You can use your hands to help. Bring your feet a little bit over the head so you can find your way into the pose more easily without losing your balance and falling out of the pose. And you can get right on top of your shoulders. You can take your hands to your thighs with your legs or with or without your legs in lotus. Pushing through the tops of the shoulders, get your hips forward. Now slowly make your way into, if you have lotus, pindasana. Just bring your lotus against your body. If you know how to take the bind, go. you can just go ahead. Wrap your arms around the outside of the legs, join your hands just below the seat and pull your thighs, your knees right down beside your ears. If you don't have a lotus, come back into plow. If you want, you can try to bring your knees down onto the shoulders and leave in front of the shoulders on the ground eventually. to be still in a pose. Practice unbroken concentration. Notice what effect it has on the mind. The mind becomes quiet. Like the observer who's watching without judgment. Now from here again ready to come back into um, a fish. Legs stay close to the head. If you have lotus you can keep a lotus. And then all the way down to your legs. Once you're down, breathe in. And breathe out, relax. Remove all fatigue. Now if you have a lotus, you can now come into your lotus fish. Press into your elbows, lift the chest. Bring the top of the head in place on the ground. And then at that point, Scooch it as close as you can, but you pull on the feet with your hands and you try to get your knees and your, um, your elbows to come down. So this is what the lotus fish looks like. And then if you're doing the regular one, just move your hands underneath your seat by lifting your seat one at a time. Palms are down. Move again your elbows close together and then lift your back up off the ground. Push your chest up. Try to get your elbows closer together and then rest the top head on the ground. Arch your back. Now breathe very fast to the nose like a sniffing dog. Close, pose, breathe in, breathe out. Now from here, 
roll back all the way into cloud pose. Push into your hands, palms down. Send your feet behind your head again if you can. And then from here, option to take both big toes. Hold your breath and see them come into Navasana. Still with your feet bound and try not to bend your knees as you're coming up. Hold your breath and come right into Navasana. If you can't, if you can't do it here with a bind, just come up, roll up and to come into Navasana. And then try to get your legs up higher, send the chest come up higher than the knees. Good, try to keep your body close to your legs. If you're very flexible, try to bring your shins right to your forehead without rounding your back too much. Stay upright. Pull on your toes. Then from here, lean back a little bit. Arms out. You can keep your knees bent if you need to. Navasana. Breathe very fast again through the nose. Motanasana. If you need to, if you're very tight hamstrings, bend your knees and rest your belly on your thighs. You can take all of your opposite elbows here, push your chest towards the knees, sink your weight of the body into your legs. Allow that to give you more release. The heels slide forward, maybe the legs. If you can already do this, don't waste your time. Just come right down and just keep pushing your chest forward as you're trying to get beyond your knees. Try to get the top of the head towards the feet. All the attention to the base of the spine, bring your attention there. Feel the blood washing that area, circulating that area. Inhale, head and chest lift. Exhale, come back. Now bring your feet close to your seat, fingertips beside your seat, and then lift up again into a squat. Right. Now from here, Adha Titi Basana. So do it in a few different ways. So slide your left shoulder in, that elbow close to the root. Lift your seat just a little bit so you can take the whole arm underneath your leg. So your hand comes over your lower back, right arm comes up, form a fist. See if you can catch it with your left hand. And then see if you can raise your right leg up, the head close to the ground. If you can't do this, you can just keep your left shoulder against the knee, right hand to your seat, and pull the right side of the seat up if you can't take the bind. Or you take a strap if you have a strap nearby. So lots of different options here. Head close to the ground. If this is still too much, bend both knees. Take hold of your wrists behind your knees. And eventually just try to push your body into your between your thighs. Try to get your seat to come up. Pushing your back to knees until your head is down, your seat is high. Now those of you in Adhititi Basana, come up into Bird Paradise if you can and if you want. Right foot down, lift the left heel, hold the breath, push into your right foot and come up. Don't think too much about it. And once you're up, you can extend your leg. Lean a little bit to the right, try to get your leg up higher. And from here, come back down. Soften your knee, come back down, back into a squat. Try it on the other side now. Move the right shoulder in. I'm going to do this way now. Okay, so you move your shoulder in, there's the seat so you can get your hand Almost all the arm is underneath the leg, and then you bring your hand on your lower back, left hand comes up, catch it with your hand, and then raise the right left hip up. Eventually, you can try to maybe get your other leg straight as well. Stay there for a moment, try to get your spine to lengthen the head, come close to the ground. Pull the left shoulders, the shoulders back. And then, when you're ready, move your right foot in a little bit, lift your right heel, push into your left foot, hold the breath, 
and you have to push into the leg that's bound with the back of the arm and come up. And then see if you can take your leg up. Now other option, if you can't get the bind, you can take your knee and see if you can wrap your hand around. You can either take your hand to your seat or if you can get your hand behind your back, you can maybe even just do this. So another option here. And then from here, release, bring the foot down. Good, now from here, starting over back bend now. Bring your feet so that they're, the toes are beyond the edges of the mat. Hands on the seat, push your hips forward, bend your knees like you're sitting on a horse, your knees can be on your toes. And then push your hands into seat, pull down at the same time, lift the chest, bring the head back. If you feel comfortable, you can slide one hand down at a time just underneath your knees. The heels, your palms sit just underneath your knees and roll the thighs outwards, roll the shins inwards so your thumbs come further between. And then see if you can press your legs straight, pushing your shins, the back of the calves into your hands, your hips forward and up. So your legs can straighten. If you're more flexible, you can keep walking your hands down. So you might be able to step on your hands with your heels, your fingers. Uh, if you want to go further, if you can see the ground easily, reach one arm over the head if you feel comfortable, Urdhva Dhanirasana, and then your left hand comes to join. Again, know your limitations, know your abilities. Now come back up. If you're in Urdhva Dhanirasana, you reverse it, right hand goes back onto your back of your leg, push your hips forward, push your, um, your hand into your back of your knee, just, and then the other hand comes up, and then walk your way back up. Everybody else can do this with us. Come all the way back up. Good. Now from here, slide down, hands to the ground, lower down onto your knees, rabbit pose. Bend your toes under, and then bring your heels and, and bring your hands to your seat. So, if option one is just keep your hands on the seat, push in, pull down, concentrate and get your heart high, your head back, your hips over your knees. If you want to go, if you can go further, really press into with your toes, lean back a little bit so you can get the right hand on the heel, left hand on the heel, and then see so if you can bring your heels together, lock your baby fingers together and drop your hips forward as though you're about to fall right on your thighs in front. Toes almost coming up off the ground. And now come back. Lean back, push your hands in your heels. Lean back so your shoulders go behind your heels and then one hand at a time onto the seat, push into the seat, and press your way back up. From here, child's pose. Forehead on the ground, sink down, breathe in, breathe out. Now bring your arms forward, and then come onto your belly. Same pose, pretty much. Danurasana. Bring the left arm across the chest in front. Bring your right foot up. Take hold of the foot. Flex your foot as so you can get it up. We really have to pull your foot. And then hold your breath. Bring your leg, other leg up. Reach back with your left hand and see if you can take your other ankle. If you have one ankle already, makes it easier. If it's too much, you can keep your thighs on the ground and just push your foot back, your feet back away from your head. If you can, however, really. Kick through the legs, try to get your feet up higher. Eventually your toes might come over your shoulder, your head. Look up. You can rock in your belly a little bit. Hold a little bit longer. Have fierce determination to stay in the poses longer otherwise. As Dharmaji says, in 20 years you'll still be in the same place. You don't make any progress. You don't uh, exercise a little bit of stamina and determination. And then 
break the pose, pull heels in, forehead on the hands, breathe in, breathe out. Hands underneath the shoulders, press up into table, hinge your seats back, bring your legs out in front. You can do either Alamati and Dasana or the modified one. So if you can, you fold your left leg, your right, your left foot on the other side of the right hip, and your left, your right foot comes on the other side of the knee, the left knee. If it's if you can't get both sides of the seat down, left leg stays extended, you move your foot out so that it's beyond the knee. Toes are close to the ankle. Right hand behind the back, down the in the back, left arm up. And then push your arm against the outside of the thigh. Inhale, push the lower back up and in. Turn to the right. Make sure you don't lean back. Your hand should be close right against this, the base of the spine. If your legs are folded, it would look like this. Maybe you can take your left hand to your heel. And this might give you a little bit, give it a little bit of tug. It might get you a little bit deeper into the twist. Push with your left shoulder against the inside, outside of the knee. Turn the whole back, not just the eyes. Twist from the base of the hips. Return, go to the other side now. Make the modification if you need to by extending the right leg and then go to your left. Keep your left hand on your thigh, close to your seat or your hip, or take hold of the heel. Try not to round the back, keep the back straight. Push the lower back up and in. Use your arm to prop yourself up. Neck is long, shoulders down. Visualize the spine spiraling around itself, going upwards. And then just watch the body turn even more just by visualizing in your mind what's happening inside. I'll break the pose, lie on the back now, relax. Take your legs out front and then just take your leg down gently for a few moments. Hands open to the sky, the palms open to the sky. Your gesture receiving, being open to all that's coming in. Have no expectations, they come anyways. Be grateful for everything that you receive from the practice, including the challenges, and even sometimes some things happen, injuries or whatever. Even be grateful for those. They help us to cultivate the knowledge of the need to break those patterns that cause the suffering with pushing too hard or just not being uh, not being mindful in the practice and laying yourself laying ourselves identified too much with the body too much remember we are beyond the body the mind and the emotions embrace all the experiences We all have to pass through everything. So have no judgment on any being who maybe does something that you might not be, might not be in alignment with your values or your thoughts. At some point maybe we were there or at some point we may still be there. Through this action of, through this process of attaining self-realization. We pass through everything, one way or another, one point or another. Be compassionate.
compassionate, therefore, towards all beings. Wish them the, a happy passage as well to self-realization. Ultimately, we're trying to all attain that. Slowly to come back from Shavasana. Become aware of the fingers, the toes, the arms, the legs, the face, the forces that animate the body. Reconnect with this beautiful form that you've been given. Treat it like a vehicle that needs maintenance that needs care so it can carry out its mission can keep going for a long time and the longer and the stronger you are the more you can share more effectively and reach more and more people keep sharing the knowledge that helps to remove those behaviors that cause pain and suffering and be a role model yourself just being kind and loving to all beings so now with that intention firmly ingrained in your mind return to seated with Om Shanti 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 instill the peace of thin send out to all beings everywhere Thank you so much for coming. Much love to you. Have a wonderful day.